Hello everyone, this is Five. We're checking out Fairmount's Dutch Vacation. I have not played this game before. We're going to give it a playtest though and see what we can find out. Um, as far as I could tell, there's no indication of the controls or anything on the game page, so hopefully we can figure that out in the game here, but let's go ahead and get rid of the overlay. This is the first thing you see when you when you boot up the game. It looks like you're in a bus, I guess, or similar. Um, and then this looks like the main menu of sorts is <laughs> very crude, but I'm sure this is all in development. Interesting art, though. Uh, this is currently windowed, so I guess clicking on that kind of... It's not <laughs> its not actually full screen. It's a, a like 1080p window now. I'm going to uh, adjust it a little bit on my own screen here. But might be a little bit funky scaling or something because it's not actually in proper full screen at the moment. But uh looks like instructions, exit start. So let's click on instructions. Oh, there's a guy here. As far as I can tell, there's no audio yet. There's some, <laughs> I guess that's unfinished art or something. Uh, I guess we're just going to click. I'm supposed to be getting instructions. I've clicked a few times. I didn't do anything. How about uh, spacebar? Enter. Anything on the keyboard? Oh, well, I clicked a, a number of times. Oh, okay. So now there's text down here. I guess it's something a little bit buggy or something. Uh, hello and welcome to Fairmount Dutch Vacation. My name is Martin. I'm actually not in this demo of the game, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello and give you some tips. First, you move with the arrow keys and you hold shift to take only baby steps. Holding shift while approaching the water will also clue you in when you're really close to falling over. Okay, um, is this meant to be keyboard only? At the moment, I'm clicking with the mouse like to advance the text here. But this suggests using the arrow keys and the shift key, which I would expect, uh, you know, you'd use both hands on the keyboard. Let me see if a uh, spacebar works. No, enter does. The game will show you, the game will show you demonstrate this and show you other techniques as you play as well. So don't sweat it too much. Look for the signs that say UIT, that's where you need to go to the level. You'll also see some people as you play, approach them and you'll automatically say hello. There are no lives, but every time you die, 20 seconds are added to your total time. Reach 24 minutes and the game will end when you reach the end of, the, of a level or your next death. And that's the basics. Good luck to you. I hope we meet again someday in the future. That's interesting. All right, um, as far as I can tell, this is a, a mouse controlled menu, so grab the mouse again. Uh, who is that? Oh, okay. Um, I, I guess that's me. I, I guess that screen was trying to show me the, uh, the controls there. That was like, oh, there's time in the, in the top right. That's not good for a playtest like this, or playtest video like this, because I like to sit and talk, and uh, it doesn't look like I can pause the game. Escape key doesn't do anything, enter doesn't. Um, there's shift in order to do our little baby steps, I guess. So, interesting. Okay. So, when I'm not pressing shift, I do like a little jump like this, a certain distance. Then when I'm holding shift, there's a little step. Um, but, it's kind of weird because with this little... Uh, the normal non-shifted step being kind of a set amount, it, it feels like you're on a grid, right? But then like when I press shift, it kind of like breaks off of that grid by moving at a different amount, so... That makes it seem a little weird. So this this obviously looks uh, similar to Frogger, the original Frogger game, and, and the movement is similar as well. But Frogger, again, was on like a grid, basically. But this apparently is on like two grids, I guess. So that's that's kind of a weird thing. Obviously, I'm wasting a lot of time here. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to go up here. Not really sure what to expect for the collision. Looks like I collided with that tree. Whoop! Actually, oh, we have like health or something. My my finger slipped and I pressed uh, both up and down at the same time. I didn't mean to. So I think there's a person here. Okay, attention. It'd be nice if the space bar would work for progressing instead of using the enter key. Why did she kick me? 
Right now you have officially been conscripted into the Dutch Defense Force. Charging you with monitoring that the city's defenses haven't been breached. Confirm you have received your orders. If I say no, are you going to kick me again? Rendezvous ASAP at the street lamp in four square and watch out for any Spaniards. Okay. Um, interesting. So I'm curious about the, uh, the collision. So I'm going to screw around for a bit because I'm like curious about how the game functions. Feels like everything kind of lines up sort of nicely if I don't ever use the shift thing, but as soon as I use that, it's sort of... It's not like I can't play anymore, but it does get a little bit confusing, like I don't really know what to expect. It looks like the collision on the bikes is pretty thin. Huh. Interesting. Well, I don't know, it seems to work okay so far. Uh, I don't know what this thing is that I'm going through, but I think you can collide with the trees, and I guess you can't... Collide with this lamp post. Yeah, the trees you have trees have collision though, so that's interesting. A little bit uh, inconsistent in that way, but uh, so what I'm gonna do is I guess I have to. Oh, what does the Alt key do? Alt key makes the game freeze for a moment. I don't know what's going on there, but go ahead and just uh, manually close the game, I guess, because I want to restart. Try playing a little bit more properly. Um, and unfortunately, there's no like menu or anything to restart the game that I can tell. So let's get this to yeah, hook into OBS there. All right, just gonna go ahead and click on start. Um, this screen is very strange. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think it would benefit to uh if absolutely nothing else lasts a bit longer so the player can uh have a chance to understand what they're looking at there so i guess we go up here talk to whomever this is about the spaniards we're supposed to go here i guess oh this looks very str oh very strange and i'm also Okay, I'm, I'm not I'm not in control in that part, so um, that's confusing because I thought I was controlling the game. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, I guess it was like a cutscene of some sort. So um, I would suggest some kind of <laughs> some kind of effort be made to make it clear that the player isn't in control at that moment in time. Ooh, okay. Um, I don't know how to adjust this particular situation. Looks like on this level it's very easy to get into situations where you have no way to avoid the damage. What is this? What? What was that? Okay. Um, oh, this is something about using the shift key. Again, like I, there's no way I could have, uh, I read about the the shift key on the, on the game page, I believe. So um, there's no way I could have figured that out from the simply looking at that little animation there. Or no, it was. I said I, I said I read about it on the on the game page, but I think it was just the uh, the tutorial in the game here. My mistake. Uh, so I guess the bikes only go on the red parts, like the brick. Yes. Holy moly. Um, so I guess more bikes are spawning, which is... I think that's what's happening. So this is becoming like increasingly impossible, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't think that was going to collide. So that's kind of... Yeah, that's one of the troubles of this sort of weird kind of grid-like movement. Uh, it definitely... At the moment, it looks like I can stand right here. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know if it's just the... Uh, Because the colliders are just so narrow. 
I definitely squeezed between a lot of the- oh, he turned. <laughs> he turned and hit me. Alright, very, uh, unorthodox. Okay, I didn't think that was gonna hit. I thought it was gonna go between that time like it did the last time, so that's weird. So yeah, I'm definitely seeing there's a lot of cases where it's... Yeah, okay, see, I thought that, that might go beside the bike. It's very difficult to, uh, understand where the where the collisions are gonna happen, so that's making it harder to play the game, you know what I mean, than probably ought to be. Or something seemingly so simple. Okay. Bike's moving vertically also, like, I can't really tell what... <laughs> like, the the extent of the, the, cl the colliders as they go up and down, it's it's not really obvious by by looking at the the sprite in that case. Um it doesn't help that it kind of blends in with the the shadow also when it's going up and down like that, so it's kinda weird. Uh but yeah, so more and more spawning in and I guess that just um I don't know what to do about that. And I guess you have some kind of health or being able to take multiple hits. I don't know how that works, I don't, I don't think it's indicated on screen anywhere that there's like a health or something. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so another thing I noticed is you, you have this this mechanic to move slowly. And the other movement is like this, this kind of large movement. Um, it kind of feels pretty bad to move slowly just because it's so slow. And then like the large movement, sometimes it's too large for, for what you're doing. It's one of these things where it's like if, if I go back to the uh, the concept of having sort of a grid-based movement like, like you would get in, in Frogger, um, you don't really have that sort of problem because you're you're only moving on a singular grid, so you're not going to have the situation where you like accidentally move a few pixels too far and end up going over the edge because you're always going to be locked to that sort of grid space, you know what I mean? Whereas once you start incorporating this um, along with the larger movement, then you could easily get in the situation. It's like, okay, I think I can go one more or whatever, and then you end up going over. Um, but the alternative is just like, you know, walk around like this all the time, and this is like physically exhausting trying to mash the keys fast enough to move <laughs> in, a, in an effective way, you know what I mean? So I feel like this is not really, um, well, it's certainly challenging, but it's not really, uh, it doesn't feel like the two types of movement really jive well, and I don't know, maybe it's sort of like a, feels a bit more like fighting with the game systems rather than, you know, playing, quote unquote, playing a game. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, see, the little baby steps are really small, and the other ones are really big, so it's like both of them are kind of bad, <laughs> in, in a way. See, that was kind of pointless, I don't know, I'm just, I was just messing around here, I didn't plan ahead what I was Gonna do here, so I guess I have to go all the way over to the right somehow. I have to, you know, there's bikes filling like that whole area there. Um, I don't know if there's any way to. Oops. Yeah, it would help if I wasn't uh, recording, probably, because I could focus a little bit more. This thing has collision. It didn't have whatever this satellite dish-looking thing is. It didn't have collision before on a different level, so that's interesting. But um. Okay, uh, for some reason, my, uh, oh, what is going on? Sorry, my, my start menu opened up a moment ago, and now I'm like, I'm losing a lot of frames all of a sudden. I don't know what's happening there. Well, it would help if this was in exclusive full screen mode, probably, because it is in a window, so there's always some like wacky stuff that can go on with the frame frame rate and everything. 
uh, just the nature of how Windows works. <clears throat> Yeah, it'd be nice to have exclusive full screen. I tell that to like every every dev that uh, that doesn't have it in their game already. Okay, yeah, that, <laughs> it's really quite annoying just how slow the slow movement goes because it's like okay, sometimes I need to move a little slower, but then it uh, it's just so slow that it feels like um. Especially because it's sort of like a timing-based game, you know, and everything's moving quite quickly. So if you move really slow, then um, bad things are going to happen because you're not going to get the timings that you need. Like you have to uh, to do some kind of brain reprogramming to get myself to like figure out how to. Uh, juggle the two different movement modes okay my mouse is moving around um yeah okay so i guess the game is what the hell okay um <laughs> i don't know the mouse is is moving around on my screen here and, and doing things so i don't know what uh what code is is executing in the game here um but uh that's very strange i'm kind of yeah i'm not really so focused on the game anymore after seeing this weird stuff happening okay yeah no, i don't know if i'm gonna miss that bike that way or not Okay, yeah, see, again, I thought <laughs> I thought I might be beside the bike. I can't really tell. Um, it's all ambiguous as far as the, the actual positions of the gliders and such, so. That was very awkward. How do I, I don't know how to, and like do this. Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to step up slowly once and then like do a longer step and, um, I guess it didn't, uh, it didn't move in the way I expected it to, so. Was more me not uh, hitting the keys I needed properly. But I guess I got hit. I don't know. <laughs> no. No. See, I'm trying to go between them. I don't know what else I could do, but try to go between those bikes, you know. Um, I long since hit 24 minutes, I guess. That's what that's supposed to say. Feels like that should have been easy. Uh, the day is over, so I guess I just like restart the game or whatever. Um, I'm probably going to try to wrap this up. The sake of the video here, uh, there's probably a lot more to find in the game. I know I didn't get very far, um, but in terms of what I've seen so far, I feel like. Uh... Ooh, so 
the kind of some of the the most fundamental elements of pretty much any game any kind of action game um like one of the most important things is like collision and kind of things being clear to the player at at, at least like where where you're going to collide and where you're not and like what is safe and what is not and i feel like that's kind of falling apart here for one thing um because between the the way that the movement works and kind of the strange like skinny colliders on the bikes it's very difficult to tell if like you're going to get hit or not you know what i mean it's also difficult to tell like if you're going to move into a position of collision or not with the way that the movement works um the ground doesn't give any any real clues like like the design of the the visuals or anything doesn't really give any clues as to like how far you're going to move or something like Again, going back to the idea, if this was just locked on a grid, it would be like a million times simpler because it's completely unambiguous. Like, if you move ahead one, you're just going to end up in the next grid space, and then you're, it's very obvious what is and isn't in that grid space, whereas uh, what we have here, um, very hard to judge, like between like how far the movement's going to take you or like where the collision actually is on the bikes on top of all that the sort of chaotic patterns that all the bikes make create like tons of situations where it feels like um might not even be possible to like move between them and stuff like that in order to avoid the damage which is um one of those things it's sort of a big no-no for <laughs> for action games is to you know create situations where the player can't win you know what i mean or can't avoid damage um and that might be you know technically it might be possible in some cases but it's just sort of could be unrealistic to expect the player to be able to do that or whatever um i'm not feeling the movement going between these two modes like this i don't think it really works in my opinion uh, if it was like you hold shift and, and like you hold a direction and you kind of move slowly rather than doing this little like one step at a time thing, that would be probably a very different story because if uh, if I could just move around continually and then I could hold shift to move slower, that sort of continuous movement isn't going to have the same kind of issues that I'm having here where the longer movement is kind of like it moves too far, the short movement moves too short, you know, <laughs> I have to like try to mash the key as fast as I can and uh, I don't think it like buffers any inputs, so like theoretically you could probably like mash it too fast and then it just ends up eating inputs. I know that happens like with this. If I mash really fast it doesn't doesn't keep going because it's uh it's too fast. So uh in any case, yeah, I think um the movement and the collisions of everything aren't really jiving together as far as I can tell, so probably be worth <clears throat> reconsidering some of these things um if you if you really like this sort of frogger feeling movement i would probably suggest just sticking with a proper grid that would uh you know obviously you can have you can have the things moving around in a continuous fashion like in frogger the cars don't move one space at a time obviously but frogger himself being tied to the grid means that it's very easy to put obstacles in the uh you know the x and y positions that you can readily interact with which sort of you know this one screen kind of feels like it works well with with sort of the the frogger style thing but as soon as things get more chaotic it, and you have to start using the shift step then it's like everything is like off the original grid you know and then it all kind of gets wacky but um Alternative might be, like I mentioned, you could just, you know, fall back on continuous movement or whatever. That might be, um, I don't know, maybe that makes it feel a little more ordinary and less interesting to just, uh, you know, hold, you know, hold a direction and, and keep moving in that direction like most games do. Um, but I would probably do one or the other, you know what I mean, in terms of 
trying to keep to some kind of grid. If that makes any sense, that's my uh, my take on it. Anyways, this was kind of difficult to play. Uh, I'm sure if I if I wasn't recording and I focused on a little bit more, I could get further. But um, for the sake of this, I hope that's uh, useful feedback for you. Um, it's obviously interesting, and the, the characters and stuff were interesting to run into, and probably all sorts of more content in the game that I didn't bother to get to. But hopefully that was useful feedback. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.